I'm Chris Hickey, a senior at Wall High. I'm here today on the grounds of Wall High School with Superintendent of Schools, George Sapasaris. Good afternoon, Mr. Hi, Superintendent. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you today? Excellent. Uh, I'd like to first off ask you about the recent, your thoughts on the recent renovations of uh, College Stadium. Well, we're extremely pleased that a, a facility such as College Stadium, uh, which has been uh, in the city for since 1939, 1940, I believe, has finally received the attention and the refurbishing that this uh, latest refer uh, effort has uh, taken place by the uh, city of Lowell and we're extremely pleased that uh, this renovation has recaptured the significance of this uh, facility and uh, uh, reinforced the, the importance of, of the college stadium tied into the baseball alumni field, tied into the soccer fields, the entire uh, athletic opportunities uh, uh, second to none now, uh, with the uh, uh, refurbishing of Cauley Stadium. Chris. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Superintendent. I'd like to thank you for your thoughts on the recent renovations of uh, Cauley Stadium. Let's uh, go over to Cauley Stadium, see what's happening over there with the rededication ceremony. Thank you, Chris. Hi, my name is Rachel Cushing and I'm also a senior at Lowell High. I'm standing here moments before the rededication of Cauley Stadium. Standing with me is the headmaster of Lowell High, Mr. William Samaras. Hi, Mr. Samaras. How are Hi, you? Hi, Rachel. How are you doing? I've noticed a lot of changes at Lowell High and I wanted to know how all the changes here have tied into that. Well, this is wonderful. As you know, we just completed a $40 million renovation of Lowell High School and I think we're going to be able to offer our students perhaps some of the, some of the finest uh, programs anywhere else in this state. We've updated our entire school. The technology will be beyond anything any other school system will have at this time. But I think this is an important addition. Sports are very important at Lowell High School. And with this wonderful sports facility, we'll be able to offer our students at Lowell High a complete program, I think, as you well know. So not only do we have strong academic programs supported by our teachers, now our coaches will have the best facilities available at, at their hand. You've got the baseball field now that the spinners used and updated for us. Now this wonderful complex is completed over here with the football stadium and the soccer field, softball fields. We have it all, and I think for our students, they, do, they well deserve it. So do you think that sports are just as important as the academic part of Lowell High? I think you have to stress. I, I think people have to realize that sports are an important part. They keep a lot of students in school that might normally not be in school. Or it, sports teach students how to be part of a team. And as being part of a team, that's what they're going to need in the world of work. So it, it all ties together. Yeah, I, I do believe that. So um, do you think that the new renovations will encourage more kids to come out here and do different sports and intramural activities? Oh, I think, I mean, when, once they come out and see this, not only will the students want to come out there, but the parents will feel uh, that their children are getting the best that the do their daughter can buy. So I think uh, you'll find more students uh, coming to Lowell High School also. Well, thank it's you. A, it's a good recruitment device. Definitely. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Next we have the president of the Friends of Lowell High, Mrs. Anne-Marie Malovich. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks, Rachel. So as a parent, how, do you, how important do you think all this renovation is here at Cauley Stadium? Well, I think the part of the importance is beyond the, um, the actual renovation itself is what it indicates to the students at Lowell High School. It indicates that the city is willing to support them, not just with words, but with um, with the money and the tax dollars that are necessary to do something like this, the spirit of cooperation between the city and the school department, and just having the support of the city is important to students at Lowell High. So how did the Friends of Lowell High tie into all of this? 
Well, the Friends of Lowell High is a, a group that's active in um, awarding scholarships to students. That's our main focus. And the more people that can be attracted to a stadium like Collie Stadium now and a facility like this, the more people notice what's going on at Lowell High School and the, the good things that are going on. Um, athletics, academics are all very important at Lowell High, and it's good for people to see the positive and, and the students doing things like that. And that just supports all the programs that we do, which are basically scholarship programs. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay. Our final guest is the city manager of Lowell, Mr. Brian Martin. Hi, hey, Mr. Martin. How are you? Mr. Martin's here to tell us a little bit about the history of Collie Stadium, and then he has agreed to take us on a short tour. Well, the uh, Collie Stadium uh, actually began construction in 1939 as a Works Progress Administration project. Actually, uh, many cities uh, were uh, in a position where there was low unemployment and a federal program uh, called the Works Progress Administration uh, was developed so that people could work uh, and do uh, work on public projects uh, in their communities. Uh, the stadium actually uh, was uh, dedicated in 1941 uh, and was fully completed in 1942. Uh, and until that, uh, until this time, uh, there really has not been a lot of money spent on this facility. Uh, and as everyone knows, the uh, all of the high school programs run out of this facility, football, track, uh, there's baseball and alumni field and uh, other events held here. Uh, and it uh, just got to a point where, as a city, uh, we thought that this facility was just as important as the schools, uh, as a police station, as a fire station. We had to do something about it. Uh, the, the stadium uh, renovation was approved by the city council on a nine to nothing vote about a year ago uh, and uh, we're spending approximately one million seven hundred thousand dollars on the facility uh, i think that when you tie this facility together with alumni field uh, with the new soccer field uh, with the new softball field that will be complete in a couple of weeks uh, you've got a track that's been resurfaced and you will have i believe one of the best high school athletic facilities in new england uh, i know of no other uh, that will match uh, and so what this says about the city is that we care about our kids, uh, that uh, kids can go to the high school, have first-class facilities. They don't have to meet, uh, live in Andover uh, or a wealthier community to have the same uh, facilities uh, that are first-class. And our kids uh, can have every opportunity to participate. Uh, I think the alumni field with the low spinners uh, worked out very well uh, in the last couple of years. Now that will be left for the high school kids. Uh, but when I think people have an opportunity to come visit Cauley Stadium uh, and take a walk around the facility, they'll say that this is money well spent. Uh, I think what we do with our parks and our schools has a direct correlation to people's real estate values, uh, to the city being a livable community, people wanting to be here and raise their families here. Uh, and I think this renovation uh, says a lot about uh, the people that are elected in the city of Lowell and the people that work here, uh, that they really care about what's going on. So uh, I think that uh, we owe it to the people uh, who in the past have worked hard and uh, paid taxes to protect this investment. Uh, Crawley Stadium uh, has a rich history. It's a, a, the structure to me is as important as a historic mill building in the downtown. There's a, an awful lot of people that have come and gone uh, through this facility. I've had uh, uh, brothers uh, play football here, uh, and uh, I think that that's what we uh, uh, talk about when we talk about Lowell being a city that uh, preserves its history. Uh, and this complex is, to me, just as important as everything else that we talk about. So uh, I'd like to uh, welcome you to take a tour with uh, Mr. Mr. Samaris and uh, Mrs. Malovich uh, so that I can walk you through the facility uh, and see what you think. Sounds great. Okay. So I got a mosquito on the, the new entranceway uh, to the Cauley Stadium complex uh, at the uh, Mike Haggerty uh, Stone. Uh, Mike Haggerty was the track coach at Lowell High School for 45 years, and uh, several years ago the track uh, had been resurfaced and they rededicated the track uh, in Coach Haggerty's name. Uh, coach Haggerty's family will be at the dedication. Uh, I think a lot of the runners that uh, participated in track during those years, I'm sure, will tour the facility as well today. Uh, but the, this stone, uh, I think, is a, uh, is a nice uh, memento for the Haggerty family and for all those that ran for Coach Haggerty uh, and participated in track and field at Lowell High School. Uh, we have also uh, the Edward D. Cauley Stone. I'm sure people will see that at the entrance 
as well. You should uh, be aware both of those individuals are in the Lowell High School Athletic Hall of Fame, uh, rich family athletic traditions. And uh, again, going back to what uh, Mr. Samara spoke about, uh, tying athletics into the educational process is really important to the city, just like it was uh, many, many years ago. Uh, so let's take a walk up the walkway uh, towards the facility uh, and take some time to uh, look at the outside of the structure, and then we'll go inside a little bit. We've done extensive landscaping improvements uh, for years. Uh, this area was uh, just uh, weeds, and uh, we thought that uh, with all of the efforts of uh, alumni field and the new soccer field and the softball field that we should pay attention to the green space around Cauley Stadium. Uh, so we sprinkled this area, uh, put new plantings in, uh, and now you have an area outside of the complex where families can picnic, uh, people can come and sit in the grass and, and enjoy the, the area uh, and uh, use the space that we couldn't use before. So uh, we think the park department and the contractor did a heck of a job here. It's a beautiful space and uh, all fenced in so we don't have to worry about anyone damaging it when there's no events here. And uh, we hope that people will use it and uh, set up tables and chairs and uh, get a lot more use out of it than we've had in the past. Um, behind me you'll see the large concrete structure uh, of Cauley Stadium uh, that was the most critical piece of the renovation project. Uh, being uh, uh, constructed in 1939 and 40 and 41, obviously we've had many winters uh, and weather conditions that would uh, wear uh, the facility down. Uh, so the first piece of this project uh, was to gut the inside of the structure, uh, pull away uh, concrete that was worn and torn, uh, identify areas where there are drainage problems, Problems have uh, damaged beams uh, and then uh, completely uh, redo uh, with concrete uh, and uh, materials uh, that would make sure that the drainage uh, and all of the structure would be protected, uh, very similar to putting a new roof on a structure. Uh, that had to be done here. Uh, and if you uh, can take a walk through, uh, you'll see all of the work that was done inside the structure, repointing the outside, uh, fixing all the cracks, and repainting the entire facility. Uh, that was uh, the guts of this project, if you will, uh, that took an awful lot of time and energy. Uh, but we think uh, over the long term, with the new drainage systems uh, in preserving the integrity of that interior structure, uh, hopefully we will have another 50 or 60 years out of this project, and uh, I think they did a heck of a job. Now we're going into the girl side, the women's side of the locker room. Uh, for uh, Since this facility was uh, first constructed, there were no uh, locker room facility for women here. Uh, there were uh, public bathrooms, but there were no uh, locker rooms for the females. And now we have uh, what I consider uh, state-of-the-art facilities for males and females uh, with uh, plenty of lockers, showers, coaches' rooms, uh, and actually a unisex uh, trainer's room so that the physical therapist uh, can come in and treat both the males and the females uh, that are participating in the sports during the season. So let's take a look at the coaches area and the girls side first. Today, if you come back and coach at Lowell High School uh, in a fall or a spring season, uh, this is the facility that you will have. The coaches have their own room, uh, their own locker area, shower area, uh, separate from the students, uh, and uh, clearly uh, something that is uh, uh, well needed and uh, long overdue. So what do you think? They look great. I love it. You want to come back and coach someday? Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Locker room, uh, the women's locker room, I think is a better term. Uh, for high school students, uh, and we have uh, a great setup now. You have handicap access uh, to the locker room uh, for anyone that needs it. Uh, you have uh, showers, uh, separate stalls and bathrooms and sinks, and look at all these lockers here. How can you beat that? Uh, really a terrific uh, setup, and then right out the door here you go towards the, uh, the, the field uh, and towards the other uh, bathroom areas, uh, and right around the corner uh, we can enter the uh, trainer's room that's now set up so male and female athletes can access uh, the trainers facilities uh, in case there's an injury. What do you think? This is absolutely wonderful. It looks great. Okay, let's say, see how the trainers room looks. Okay. Thanks. Trainers room, uh, the athletic trainers room, we have uh, a company called TheraFit, Sue Petulo uh, is the uh, therapist, a graduate of Lowell High School and uh, works with all the athletes. Uh, and now we have a situation where both males and females will have access to this room uh, from their locker rooms uh, so that they can be treated with the Whirlpool, uh, various uh, taping and uh, therapeutic exercises if the trainer puts them on that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, everyone has the same access and uh, I think that's important. Uh, 
uh, we've left the girls out for too long a time. And uh, Rachel, you run track. What do you think? Oh, this is great. Um, just to be able to get in here and able to see a trainer is a big step, and it's absolutely beautiful in here. I like it a lot. Well, I think that um, in the fall you probably have a lot more football players in here uh, with uh, various injuries because of the nature of the sport. Uh, but any any student athlete uh, in any season uh, will have access to this facility. So it's not like if you're uh, playing a sport and you're not out at Cauley Stadium, you'll still be able to get in here uh, and work with the trainer. So it'll be a permanent uh, setup uh, for all of our athletes and uh, we're delighted with how it came out. We still need a few more tables and, uh, and things to that nature, but I'm sure it'll be all set up in a couple of weeks. It's wonderful. Okay. I think now would be the uh, best time to go into the boys' locker room, uh, the men's locker room, uh, where you have the oversized football lockers and the facility that can accommodate all of our football players uh, for the first time ever uh, in one facility. So let's take a look. In the men's locker room, and as you can see, Rachel, you've got these oversized lockers. Uh, and again, it's the nature of uh, football. You've got all the equipment, and uh, you have uh, you need more space. Uh, but the uh, locker room, very similar to the girls' side, uh, they've got new showers, uh, uh, access to the trainers' room, uh, an area for the uh, students to meet with coaches. Uh, and it uh, seems to me like you've got one of the nicest locker rooms in uh, I don't know any school, probably in New England, for uh, a sport like this. What do you think? It definitely looks like, looks like it. And uh, you've never been in the football locker room, so this is a first for you? And probably the last. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Uh, but one of the things I think is important is that all of the kids that play on a particular team uh, can be together. Uh, we never had enough space so that you know, varsity and JV and freshman kids, for example, on a football program which might number 120 or 130 students, can all be together uh, and make sure that everything is secure and they can all lock up their equipment. Uh, uh, so I think this is just a great uh, setup for all the kids. And then in the spring, uh, you'll be able to put the track and field students in here. Uh, and baseball players and uh, other teams that are going out. So you're going to use this uh, mostly in the fall and the spring uh, and yet still have the trainer's room available in the winter. So it's a nice setup. It definitely is. Yeah. So you're still going to uh, come back and coach here someday? I think it's a positive yes yeah. now. I hope so. Okay. I think what we like to do now uh, is uh, go outside and go uh, into the uh, handicap access bathrooms. They've done all those over now for the public. Uh, and then go up into the bleachers and take a look at the outside. All right. Okay public restroom. Uh, this is the male uh, restroom and uh, I think uh, for the men who are watching they'd remember years and years of having just the trough in here and perhaps one uh, toilet. Uh, and this has been completely renovated. It's all handicap access. Uh, it has uh, remote uh, control on and off buttons for the faucets, for the toilets uh, which will greatly reduce vandalism. Uh, and it's clean and bright and uh, uh, something that when somebody comes into this facility says well this is really taken care of. And in the the women's side, we have the exact same setup, uh, obviously with more toilets. Uh, but this is something uh, long overdue, uh, and uh, all of the uh, mechanics are here, uh, mechanical, so that they can come in and power wash things after games and keep it all neat and clean. What do you think? I love it. It's really clean and really bright. It's yeah. great. And I think it's something that uh, is very important. People bring children to the facility. Yeah. Uh, they want to make sure that there's a clean toilet and a place to wash your hands and take care of uh, uh, personal business. So it's something that really we had to spend a lot of money on to make sure this was all clean. It's great. Okay. I think it's time to take a look at the outside and then look at the bleachers, see what the, the whole complex looks from up, up in the stands a little bit. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the bleachers themselves. Sure, Rachel. What we had to do is we had the old wooden planks uh, for uh, seating. Uh, we had to remove all the old wooden planks, uh, actually come in with the concrete workers uh, in skim coat each step, each landing area for the entire complex so that all of the water would run off and down to the bottom of the stands uh, into a whole new drainage system. Uh, so you'll see when you walk around that there's a skim coat uh, of, uh, of mix uh, so that you have just the right pitch on every step in this whole complex. So that was a very time-consuming project, uh, but something that we had to do to protect the structure uh, from drainage problems uh, which happened in the first place. So they did a great job. We now have all new aluminum seating. Uh, uh, and from this particular area, you can see the track has all been done with a skim coat. Uh, and you also can see from here what we need to do in the next phase. We need to, new, to do visitor bleachers, uh, look at a concession stand on the other side to tie into the softball field. Uh, but from here, uh, I kind of think of a, of a better uh, looking stadium for a high school facility uh, in New England. And uh, I think people are going to be very proud and very surprised when they come in here this evening. So uh, I'd like to now ask Mrs. Malovich for some final comments uh, from the Friends of Lohi. Anne-Marie? 
Well, thanks, Brian. I think the word proud is um, exactly what I'm feeling right now. Just sitting here looking at this, I can't wait for the, the game to start and for all the people who come to the game to see what a wonderful job the city's done. It, it's just terrific to be here. Bill? Thank you, Brian. Thank you for the tour. No, I, I have to say on behalf of our students, I mean, when they come to this game tonight and the parents and they see the type of support that the city has given to them, I mean, not only they'd be proud, they're going to be very, very grateful for what you people have done for us. This is a wonderful, wonderful facility. And I'd like to put my uh, pitch in for this being on the 50-yard line that this should be named the headmaster's bench right now. So <laughs> what do you think? You got it. Actually, the headmaster can sit anywhere he wants after the city manager picks out his seat. Uh, but, uh, no, Bill, we're uh, pleased. I think one of this, uh, what this shows is that if a city council uh, will uh, look at issues, uh, do the right thing, invest in the future of the city, protect your infrastructure, and think about doing things for kids, uh, that these projects are all worthwhile. And I think uh, we owe a great deal of gratitude to our state uh, delegation. Uh, we had a, a $500,000 self-help grant from the state uh, that helped fund this project. And uh, Senator Panjitakis will be speaking in the program today on behalf of the state delegation and our city councilors uh, who all voted for this uh, and will be here this evening. Uh, they deserve an awful lot of credit. And finally, the citizens who support what we're doing here uh, because we think this is a great project and something very important to the city. So, Rachel, thanks for being with us. Uh, sure. No, really, I'd like to add, I talked to a lot of the principals in the area and other parts of the state, and I don't know of anyone who could say that they had a city uh, council or school committee or state delegation put this much effort towards a group of students like what has happened in Lowell. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say one last thing on behalf of the students. Thank you very much for all of this. It looks great, and um, enjoy the dedication. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this this re renovation is really uh, one step of a, a larger picture for uh, you know the, re the the renovation and the you know the revitalization of Lowell's educational system. Uh, can you tell us some other things, some other projects that have uh, that are in the works or have been in the works for the past couple of years? Sure. Uh, as uh, in 1987 uh, was the beginning of uh, the revitalization of the physical plants for the Lowell school system in the city of Lowell when. The uh, city of Lowell was the school department were able to receive 90% reimbursement money for the renovation of the former trade school buildings right over to our rear here, the Arts and City Magnet Schools, the McDonough Arts and McDonough City Magnet Schools. And then in uh, early 1990, the uh, phase one of a long range buildings program was approved by the uh, city Council and the City Manager's Office to appropriate $131 million for the construction of 10 new school buildings, seven elementary and three middle schools, and an re extensive renovation of four middle schools. And between 1991 and uh, 1995, we, the school department, the City of Lowell, were able to uh, uh, construct and open the, as I mentioned, the seven new elementary schools and the three middle schools in addition to renovating uh, four extensive renovation of four middle schools. And that completed phase one of uh, the city's attempt to revitalize our school physical plants, which as you know, Chris, uh, most of our schools prior to this dated prior to 1900. In fact, we had a school, the Coburn School, which we were using at that time, was built in 1848. And it's sure in 1848, it was a great structure, but it's seen its day. Now, uh, since the completion of phase one, the uh, school committee and the city manager and the school co city council were very pleased to support, were very pleased that they supported uh, an appropriate $40 million bond issue for the second phase of the buildings program, and that was for the renovation of Lowell High School on both sides of the canal, and uh, the addition, two new wings, a uh, 16 classroom wing at the end of the 1922 building, and a whole library media uh, center right to your rear uh, for the 1980 building. And uh, over the last uh, few weeks, the contractor has been completing this $40 million renovation addition to Lowell High School. And that, that completes uh, phase two of the buildings program. At the same time, City Manager Martin was very supportive in assisting us in doing a small 
uh, renovation at the Riley School for uh, $400,000, which is taking the inner core uh, area that was used for shower area, I'll call it, and we, we've gutted that, and we've uh, changed that into a library media, a computer lab, and a communication center, which will hopefully be finished by November 1st of this year. And we have, uh, through the efforts of the school committee this past spring, in the support of the city manager, we have en embarked on phase three of the extensive buildings program for the city, and that is to generate a feasibility study to, uh, to look at renovating and adding to two elementary schools, the Joseph Pine School in South Lowell and the Pawtucketville Memorial School in Pawtucketville. Uh, in addition to that, looking at uh, replacing the Maury School in the Highlands, a K-4 school with a new school, and building a new elementary school uh, to uh, hopefully in, the, uh, in and around the uh, old Butler School site on Gorham Street, and the additional uh, looking at the Washington School, which is a K-4 school in the Highlands, on how we can uh, possibly replace that school. Uh, tied to that is the uh, need to uh, build two new middle schools, grades 5 to 8, for the city and the school system, which is part of the study that's being accomplished by a design part, DRA architectural firm, uh, which helped build five schools in Lowell. So we expect that report to be uh, in our hands, to be shared with the school committee and the city manager and the city councils over the next uh, two to four weeks. Once we receive that report, then we, we're going to be looking at what is the projected cost of that and uh, preparing to file applications to the Department of Education. Uh, and we've been in constant communication with the Department of Education about what Lowell needs to, the next step that Lowell wants to take in phase three of our buildings program. They're very supportive, receptive, and uh, if all things are successful, these schools will also be funded at 90 percent. So uh, it's, we're quite optimistic. Uh, we're very pleased, one, with what's happened to Cauley Stadium, how it ties in to the entire athletic program there. In fact, when I went to Lowell High School, they had four sports, mm -hmm. and just for boys. Now we have, about, I think, 29 sports, boys and girls. So having this type of complex for our athletes, uh, start with the baseball field and the football field and the track and the soccer, the practice fields, certainly enhances the opportunities for our students when it comes to uh, athletics. Renovating Lowell High School, as we've just completed renovating, is enhancing the academic uh, portion. Uh, we're going to have almost a thousand computers in this school with over the next six to nine months. The, uh, uh, that's second to none around. And the opportunities for our students for today, tomorrow, and into the 21st century throughout the system have been greatly enhanced by phase one and phase two of the buildings program and now we were about to embark on phase three and we look forward to that uh, challenge thank you very much uh, mr superintendent i'd like to thank you for your time you, good luck Chris. good luck with phase three